I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, Birch Living. More on them in a bit. I have some homemaking to do today. The first thing on my list is to deep clean the pantry and the refrigerator. Along with that, I got the idea to do a bit of a pantry challenge. I don't know if you've seen this around YouTube, Instagram. Basically the idea is that when you think you need a grocery shop, which I'm at that point right now, where there are some things that I feel would make life a bit more convenient over the next week or so, a little bit more produce, some frozen items like a few of my favorite frozen fruits. Um, this is gonna force us to use some of the things that maybe we don't like using as much. Now, we of course, since we live on a little bit of a homestead, have some renewable things or things that come in every single day. Examples would be raw milk, like I was just putting away, fresh eggs. Our chickens are in full-blown production mode again. And so even if I don't go to the grocery store at all, I have milk, I have eggs, and I have a large stock of grains and flour. And so I can use my sourdough starter, use milk and eggs, and then I also have a freezer stocked with meat. So with all of that, um, honestly, we could make it for a lot longer than just my weekly grocery shop that I'm not going to do this week. I love taking time to clean the refrigerator very thoroughly and reorganize it whenever groceries are a bit low. Now, of course, we never get them super low. I do keep a large stock of a lot of things, like I mentioned, and so there's always gonna be stuff in there. But things just get really unorganized over time. Like there's a couple different, maybe four different types of mustard in this little condiment area. The reason for that is we'll be on our way to something like a, a play group with friends or something, and we need something quick. So I'll run in and grab mustard and mayo or something to make for a quick park lunch. And then we have that, even though we already had a good supply of that at home. So I'm gonna just remove everything, clean everything thoroughly. I have a little spray bottle of vinegar and water that I use all around our house. I use it on countertops, windows, spills, just anywhere where a little extra cleaning power is desired. It's, it's really effective. Some of you might be wondering why on earth there are dry erase markers in a refrigerator. That's because when we bring in the milk each morning to label it, we like to do that with dry erase markers on the cap. And if we put them anywhere else, the kids get them. Our kids are, let's just say that they're very creative. And so no writing utensil, marker, glue, anything that's a supply that they would enjoy is safe from little hands. And the one place we found where we always have what we need when it comes to labeling our jars is the refrigerator. So I have a little section in the fridge where I keep cultures and I have this little thing of probiotics that I realized that it has been in there a while and I just need to put it somewhere where I'll remember to take it over the next couple days because it's only like five pills left and it's been sitting in there forever. I also had a few expired things to throw away, unfortunately, but it's always good to every once in a while thoroughly go through things. I like to combine condiments that have about the same expiration date. There is no need to have that many mustard sitting in there. My kids do love mustard, so we need it, but no need to have that many. I am attempting to fit all condiments, salsa and whatnot, all in this one little spot, and I was successful. And so another thing I like to do whenever I'm cleaning the refrigerator out is to reorganize it. We're definitely the type to put everything back just wherever we want to, that there's an open spot, we'll put it there. And I did this actually a couple days ago, now I'm just sitting here editing this video. And since then, I've been more mindful. Okay, there's syrup sitting on that shelf, it does not go there. Now, of course, after about a week, I won't care anymore, 
But right now I am keeping this thing clean because I know exactly where things go. I have a condiment section. I have a, a sweet stuff section. So a spot that has syrups, jellies, jams, things of that nature. This bottom shelf here drawer used to have a lid and a divider and they just would pop out at wrong times. I don't, I think it's just a faulty design of this thing and they'd be laying on the floor or I, I would just find them everywhere. I decided just to get rid of them. So it's just a wide open drawer, which can be nice, but it can also be very unorganized. So today after uh, getting everything all cleaned out and wiping it out with water, I am going to be putting everything back in some kind of container. So I have a basket for the onions. I have a wire basket for potatoes. I'm gonna put the garlic in a little glass jar because I'm always, I'm just always in a hurry whenever I'm cooking. I, I've got a lot of things going on. I wanna chop up this vegetable real quick, do this really fast, and I'll just throw the garlic back in, a couple cloves in the bottom drawer. And it's nice, at least for this exact moment, to have everything very much contained. My goal is that by the time I go to get groceries again, I've used up every last potato, carrot, pepper, onion, probably not garlic, because that's a lot of garlic, but just make it to where whenever I restock this, I know that everything is brand new. I like having these side doors for milk it makes more space in the main part of the refrigerator we recently well i guess it wasn't that recently but we rearranged the shelves in here it, it was weird that we didn't notice that we should do that because there was i believe there was another shelf or at least they were there was more closer together as a family with a dairy cow we need tall spaces in the refrigerator and one day luke took it out and i was like oh that's what we were missing this whole time we needed to rearrange this refrigerator for our needs. All right, taking a break from my cleaning up and homemaking before I get into doing a whole bunch more cooking and taking you along with me. I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Birch Living. Birch Living is a natural and organic mattress company. Sleep is so important. We spend about a third of our lives asleep. Whenever our kids are little, they're spending sometimes half of their day sleeping. So it's really important to make sure your sleeping environment is free of a lot of the harmful chemicals that can happen in the off-gassing of conventional mattress production. Birch's non-toxic mattresses are made right here in America and they're crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. Unlike synthetic mattresses, the wool in these mattresses make it hypoallergenic and mildew resistant. We have three Birch mattresses here in our home and I love having the peace of mind knowing that the organic materials are sourced right from nature as they should be. We have two of the regular birch twin size mattresses in our boys room but we also have the queen size birch Lux. Now the birch Lux is a premium upgrade to their original well-loved birch natural mattress. It is comprised of eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. The Lux model also features an added quilted organic cotton pillow Euro top, making it extremely comfortable. We had some house guests here last summer and so many comments because people were all throughout the house and the cottage on how comfortable the mattresses were. And so I had, of course, to tell them that they were birch mattresses, organic, all natural, and yet very, very comfortable. The Lux also features natural non-toxic latex that relieves pressure points and targeted zone lumbar support also provides enhanced contouring. With your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. So you can know that what you are purchasing will last you for the long haul, that you're going to love it and that it will be a staple in your home and your sleep environment for many years to come. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. Birch is offering Farmhouse On Boom viewers 20% off your order plus two free pillows. You can visit the link birchliving.com forward slash farmhouse. It'll also be in the description box below. I'm just putting a little bit of one day's milk into this jar with the kefir. 
I love combining things. When I think I can get away with it, I do it because it makes the refrigerator items more condensed and that's just what makes it look tidy. Plus it'll get used just fine. Kefir's a little bit strong and so a little bit of milk to dilute that down. Nobody's gonna be complaining about that. I also do have some kefir grains in a larger jar that I'm gonna move to a smaller jar. They are just hibernating right now because we don't have any kefir going, but I can pop them right back into some milk. For lunch today, I am throwing in every random thing. So there was some thawed out bacon. I had a couple random little bits of leftovers. What else? The goal was just calories. Getting the refrigerator cleaned out. Johanna got the boys on chia seed pudding making. So that uses up milk. The chia seeds, we do this on occasion because they're very absorbent. You put a small amount in, a large amount of milk, add some cocoa powder and honey, and the kids think they're eating pudding, and yet all of this raw milk is being consumed. My next order of business is to head out to the deep freezer to fill my dish up with meat that we can use all throughout this week. It is amazing how close a meal is if you have thought out meat. I know I talk about this tip nonstop, but when I first became a homemaker, a wife, and I had meals to cook, that was always the biggest problem. I needed something I could thaw really fast because I didn't think about it ahead of time. And now I just put what I think we're gonna need for the week from the deep freezer into this dish. It's thawed, that means that we're gonna have a quick meal. Now, of course, today I don't have any meat in there yet. I'm gonna have it for the rest of the week. So I'm going to use the fastest thawing thing for tonight's dinner. All right, next I'm gonna move on over to the pantry. You see me in this pantry nonstop. It takes constant maintenance and attention. We typically cook three meals a day in this house from scratch. We recently, my sister or somebody was telling me about some trend going around the internet about being an ingredient family or a food family. It was something along those lines. I missed the TikTok trend because I don't, I don't really have TikTok, but a, we are most certainly, if you are familiar with this trend, we are an ingredient family. We have stuff to make food with, and that's pretty much it. There are a few things convenience-wise that we get here and there on occasion, but for the most part, this place gets used every single day with flour, seasonings, cocoa powder, and it becomes a mess. I'm going through my pantry and I found this little container of seasoning that was just shoved to the back. I think at one point I picked it up somewhere and it needs to be by the stove so that it gets used. You know, that's what happens. Stuff gets put away in a way that you're never going to use it if you don't consider where you place it so that it's easy when you're in a pinch trying to get dinner on the table. All right, let's see some afters and we can talk about what I have on hand here. I have jalapenos all contained to the top part. Below the well-stocked butter area, I have several jars of lard that I do plan to use. For the vegetable section, I normally have white onions, but I'm trying to get through all of these red onions. Still well-stocked on cheeses. That's okay though, because we do use a lot of cheese. I won't need to restock this even probably during my next grocery shop. My main goal is to get rid of some of those things that actually do go bad. In the pantry, I have still tons of preserved eggs. I also had tons in the freezer, you might've noticed. And now the chickens are giving a lot of eggs. But I've been making every single morning a puff pancake, which uses up two cups of freeze dried eggs. And then we also make some fried eggs from fresh eggs with it. So we end up using a lot of that. I have a good supply of dried fruit and nuts and beans and rice in the baskets. Then the canned things like tomato paste, and syrup, black beans that are not dried, tomatoes, and then I also have a whole cabinet of honey, salt, grains like kamut and whole wheat, tons and tons of eggs, and then I have a top cabinet that has extra flour, sugar, granola, powdered sugar. We do have problems with mice here, and so keeping some things like that that they can chew through the bags on is very crucial. Okay, now that you can see what I have, let's talk about what I'm going to make over this next week with the items that I have in my pantry. And I realize that I, I have such a good stock that this can hardly be considered a sacrifice at this point. There are a few things I'd like, some different produce like I mentioned, but we're gonna be just fine. And we would be for a long time. The first thing I'm going to make here are sourdough baguettes. I have been making these like crazy. 
As many of you know, I am a blogger over at farmhousehomeboon.com, and so a lot of my life involves recipe testing, which is why I keep a large stock of flour and grains, and of course, my family doesn't mind one bit testing out my creations. Some recipes take a lot of testing. This baguette recipe is one of them. Now, the way that I make all my sourdough breads, well, not all of them, but any of like the artisan style, is I combine the flours and the water first for them to auto ice. And then I add the starter and the salt. I I let that rest for a while and then I start the stretch and folds. So as I am making dinner here, I will be visiting my dough to give it a stretch and a fold. And you can see how that gluten develops throughout the stretch and fold process. It's a nice slow process that really helps to develop the gluten in sourdough breads that will be long fermented. I have a hankering for sausage, sauerkraut, and apples. Now, we have so much sauerkraut because I got a good deal a while back, from Azure Standard, I believe, on cabbage. And I made such a large amount that we have fermented sauerkraut with just about every meal, but then I also like to put it in cooked things. There is a different taste with cooked sauerkraut, and part of me feels bad because I'm destroying those probiotics. Part of me is like, I'm just eating a cooked vegetable. I'm not going to feel bad about it, and it is so good when simmered slowly with this sausage. So I get sausage from my sister's farm, and it was the fastest thing to thaw out in the meat that I brought in. I'm frying potatoes in reserved bacon grease, and then I am cooking apples, sausage, and kraut. Now, I remembered halfway through this that I forgot to clean out the bottom freezer, and that a couple weeks ago when I was at my parents, she had grilled some of the sausages from my sister's farm, and I already had a lot of food that week, so I just threw them straight into the freezer, and I almost forgot about them. And so (laughs) to make this more substantial, and looking back, my kids ate every last bit of this dish. So the first amount was never going to be enough. And I really didn't think it would be, but I thought there's enough other leftovers that would be fine. But uh, everybody loved this. Even the little kids, anybody who's even slightly picky really enjoyed the combination of apples, sauerkraut, and sausage. It was funny because afterwards I had talked about, I mentioned something about the apples and the kids were like, wait, apples? I'm like, okay, in a dish like this, Apples cook their flavor out, lending their flavor to the other parts of the dish, and the apple itself tastes a little bit like a potato. All right, you can see this gluten is getting very developed. I'll perform about six series of stretch and folds, doing a little bit of a coil fold to make it nice and glossy and smooth and finished while it rests again. I warmed up the frozen sausages. They're already cooked, sliced them up, added in a bunch more sauerkraut, more apples. I just like doubled this dish. I had to get a a whole new pot because the original one I got wasn't big enough. This is something I'm going to be making all the time now. I also added some of the seasoning that I found buried in the pantry. Again, now that it's accessible, I am using it. We had a little bit of oatmeal left in the pantry as well as half a container of currants and half a container of golden raisins. So I cooked all of that with some oatmeal, added some maple syrup. I had Liz Hasselmeyer recently on the podcast from the Homegrown Podcast, and she was talking about her hacks for making oatmeal for picky kids more protein rich by adding collagen or egg whites. I love that tip because what child doesn't love oatmeal? All right, now I am getting some meat on. I have a pork shoulder roast that thawed out from yesterday or the day before, or whenever this ends up being. I seared it in some lard added salt, pepper, and some of that seasoning again from the pantry, added some wine, some broth. I had a half a thing of broth in the refrigerator that I'm going to use up before I make more or whatever. I will get that in the oven on 300 degrees. That will be dinner. So it's going to be cooking all day. One of my favorite things to make whenever we don't have all the things is egg burritos. We always have eggs, whether they're freeze dried or frozen or fresh, and then some kind of vegetable. You can throw anything in this. We had some peppers and onions to use up. I I forget why I had peppers. I think we had a taco night with friends over, which no, 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 that's not right. We had a pizza night with friends over. I was mixing up. I was thinking that was a long time ago. We had that taco night. No, no, it was more recent than that. So anyways, we have some peppers to use up. And when I bury them in eggs and cheese inside tortillas, everybody will eat onions and peppers. 
I also had some frozen potatoes that I don't know why I've largely just been ignoring. They've been in there for a really long time. They're super easy, so why don't I throw them into things? Again, this is the benefit of the pantry challenge. You're, I'm low on potatoes, so I'm gonna be using frozen potatoes. I am not low on corn tortillas because I bought them in bulk, so we need to use those up as well. This is a popular thing in our house. I need to make it more often, especially now that we're getting so many eggs. Eggs are such a great protein source. They're expensive right now across the country, but if you have chickens, they are in abundance right now. And so what a inexpensive protein source. I neglected to show until right now the shaping process for the baguettes, which happened the day before. So this recipe makes three baguettes. I took the dough that after I did all the stretch and folds, developed that gluten, allowed it to sit for the bulk ferment, divide into three. I let it bench rest for about 30 minutes. I do a little pre-shape by adding tension against the countertop. Then after that time frame, I shape them into the baguette. So I lightly flour the surface and then I am pulling up the long edge here of a little rectangle I created and pressing the seam in towards the middle. This creates tension in the dough. It, I always thought, you know, why don't you just take the dough and plop it into a baguette shape? But the reason for that is to create the oven spring and the tension. You need to uh, roll it, pull it against the counter. This is a technique that I've learned is very vital to bread making and especially in these baguettes. They've had lots of rounds and I finally got this crispy exterior, fluffy interior oven spring. And so I'm trusting that every part of this process was important. Now you can create a little tea towel uh, shaping mechanism, or you can buy a baguette pan. I have the baguette pan. After they rest in the refrigerator overnight, I put in the slashes. I'm just doing four slashes pretty deep so that they open up in the proper places. I don't want them to split anywhere. The dough is cold. This does help with the oven spring in my experience. I will be posting this recipe at some point over on the blog. It, it might even be up now. I can never remember like when the videos are going out and the blog post. I'm also spritzing them with some water to create browning. And then on the bottom rack of the oven that I've preheated to 500 degrees, so super hot, I'm adding some boiling water. I'm trying to create steam inside my oven so that it mimics the same thing that happens in a cast iron Dutch oven. Now you can buy long cast iron Dutch ovens for baguettes, but I was trying to create all of that environment in my oven, heat, steam, without having to buy any special pans. These turned out so delicious and they're going to be awesome with the pork as a little pork sandwich. Tonight I have a helper in the kitchen who wants to make his world famous mac and cheese. In the case of today, bow tie and cheese. I have more of that seasoning. I'm just using that stuff up now that I have it. To add to my very tender pork shoulder that's been cooking all day. And then Eli here shredded up some mozzarella and cheddar. He assures me that the more cheese, the better. This is gonna be the best mac and cheese ever. That's what he's saying. So we have that next to our baguettes stuffed with pork and cheese. I haven't been recording breakfast every day during this process, but we've been eating puff pancakes, eggs, and lots of smoothies. Again, I like to combine kefir. In this case, I'm combining kefir with yogurt. I find that my kids will drink it a lot better. Yes, they will drink kefir smoothies, but whenever I make it half yogurt, they, they consume it a lot better. I also have frozen cherries. I do not prefer frozen cherries for smoothies. I picked these up on an Azure Standard haul because I was getting all the fruits, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and I thought, why not cherries? But that's, again, the pantry challenge deal. We don't have any other frozen fruit except frozen bananas, and the frozen bananas that we have are a little bit freezer burnt, but we're gonna use them up. I told Luke, we either are gonna use them or throw them away. So we're choosing use them. They really don't taste bad whenever they're in this, this context. So I'm adding frozen bananas, cherries, and honey to my yogurt and kefir. The kids consumed it great. I added some bee pollen to mine as well. Another cut of meat that I had thawing in my dish 
was a roast. I'm doing it just exactly like the pork shoulder except for the additional vegetables. So I'm searing it, adding on my special seasoning again. I don't even know what this is. I think it's a Mediterranean seasoning. It's a great blend. Carrots, onions, my red onions, of course. Wine, broth, I'm using the rest of that broth so I can throw that away, get that out of my fridge. I also made some multigrain sourdough bread. This is a recipe coming to the blog. I soaked uh, some multigrain cereal, added some more of like the sandwich bread sourdough ingredients so that I can serve it alongside our pork. I don't have enough potatoes to be serving potatoes with every single meal. So I'm using grains as our carb. Oatmeal, whole grains, flour. It's always good and filling to have some kind of carb with the dish. It also stretches it a bit further. We do rely pretty heavily on potatoes, especially in the winter, but also breads, which is why I keep such a stock. We also have enough kraut to probably last us until people are growing kraut in their gardens. I can pick up uh, cabbage at a farmer's market. I don't know if I'll grow it this year. I'm going to keep my garden very, very basic, but we can stock up at the farmer's market. All right. I'm going to show you one more day and then tell you a little bit about what's left and what I plan to make from that. So I'm frying up the rest of our potatoes. I got a whole chicken in the oven with more of my seasoning. I had another loaf of artisan bread, add a little kraut, and it's a complete meal. More things that I can make from what I have in the freezer and the pantry, sourdough skillet. This is where you combine meat and vegetables, add a little sourdough topping and some cheese, sourdough pizza. I still have all the makings for quiche or egg bake. I could make a lot more Dutch baby pancakes. Sometimes I use sourdough starter. Sometimes I use einkorn. Sometimes I use a combination of, of both of those. I think we could go several more days without going to the grocery store. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed going along with me as I clean out the fridge and the pantry. I kind of planned to keep shooting until everything was gone, but we have a lot more. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe. I make new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Mm -hmm.